Hi, hello. This is Ramesh Kumar Lalkota, Assistant Professor of Botany, MVS Government Arts and Science College at Anamus, Mahbub Nagar. Today, we will discuss the subfamily Mimozoidae. Before going into the lesson, we will see the classification as per Bentham and Hooker's system of classification. This Mimozoidae belongs to the class Dicotyledons, subclass Polypetale, series Calciflorae, order Rosales, family Leguminaceae, and the subfamily Mimozoidae. The other two subfamilies of a Leguminaceae are Papilnoidae and Cisalpinoidae. Okay, we have already seen. Uh, those two subfamilies today in our class we will see Mimozoidae. Mimozoidae it includes 65 genera and 2950 species distributed in tropical and temperate regions. In India about 15 genera and about 72 species are seen and in APN Telangana from where I dwell uh, nearly 38 species belonging to 10 genera are seen. And uh, Acacia is the largest genus with 1000 species. And the type genus of this family is Mimosa. You can see the pictures, images here. This is Acacia and this is Mimosa. Okay, so Acacia being the largest genus uh, with 1000 uh, species and uh, this uh, Mimosa is the type genus of this family. So this is regarding its distribution. Now we will see some familiar plants belonging to this subfamily. Acacia auriculiformis, Areca catachu, Acacia consina, Vachellia leucophilia, Vachellia nilotica, Adenanthera pavonina, Albizia lebec, Pethacelobium dulce, Mimosa podica, Prosophis joliflora, Prosophis cineraria, Samania summon, and Xylia xylocarpa are some of the familiar plants of this family. Now we will see the images and uh, we will discuss their common names also. First, I will discuss the local name that is uh, the name in Telugu and then I will also discuss the Hindi name of it. Okay, so we will see one by one. Acacia auriculiformis. This is commonly called as Australia Tumma in Telugu and in uh, Hindi it is called as Australia Babul. Okay. Australia Babul. The, uh, you can see the picture here. Uh, this is Areca Katachu, uh, which is commonly called as Vakar Betel Nut in Telugu and Guvar Supari in Hindi. This is Acacia consina. Acacia consina, uh, it is popularly called as shikakai. It is also known as soap nut plant. Okay. Uh, then, Vachellia leucophilia. Earlier, it was also called as Acacia leucophilia. Uh, this is uh, commonly called as Thellatumma in Telugu and uh, Safed Babul in Hindi. Vachellia leucophilia. This is Vachellia nilotica. Uh, which was earlier uh, known as Acacia nilotica or Acacia arabica. Okay, so the, its a common name is Nallatumma uh, in Telugu and uh, Babul or Kikar in Hindi. This one, Adnanthera pavonina, its common name uh, Bandi Guravinda, and in Hindi it is called as Badi Gumchi. Badi Gumchi in Hindi. Okay. This one, Albizia lebec, commonly called as Dirisena, and uh, in Hindi it is called Shirishke Fool. This one, Pithacolobium dulce, commonly called as Simachinta, and uh, in Hindi it is called Jungle Jalebi. This one, Mimosa pudica, uh, we call it as Atipatti in Telugu, and Lajwanti in Hindi. This one, Prosophis juliflora. Uh, Sarkar Tumma in Telugu and uh, Vilayati Babul in Hindi. This one, Prosophis Cineraria. This one is called uh, uh, Jammi or Shami Vruksh. And in Hindi, it is called Jandar 
Khejri. Okay. This one, Samenia, Saman. Uh, in Telugu, we call it as Nidraganeru, or in Hindi, it is called Gulabi series. Okay, so these are some of the important and familiar plants of this subfamily, Mimozoidae. Now we will see the vegetative characteristics of this family. So the fir uh, first one, habitat. These plants, mostly these are xerophytes and uh, a very few are mesophytes. And uh, they do have thorns on their stems. Okay. Uh, regarding to its uh, habit, all types of plants are seen in this uh, subfamily. You can see trees, herbs, shrubs, thorny scandin shrubs, and tendrilar uh, woody lions are also seen. Now we will see the examples of uh, each type. See, uh, Samania saman, Xylia xylocarpa, Albizia lebec. All these are examples for trees of this family. And uh, this is Mimosa podica, which is a herb. What is a herb? A uh, herb has a weak stem and a herbaceous stem that is green in color, okay? It is a uh, seasonal plant mostly, okay? Then you can see here shrubs, example for shrubs are Prosophis, Mimosa rubicollis, okay? These are shrubs, they, go, they grow bushy in nature, okay? Shrubs, uh, they are bushy in nature and uh, their uh, stems are stout, but they, are, they grow uh, to a little heights and they are bushy in nature. These are than, uh, thorny scandin shrubs. Uh, thorny scandin shrub means uh, the uh, shrubs which are climbing. Okay, these shrubs are climbing uh, with the help of the thorns and uh, hook like structures which are present on the uh, stem and the branches. They climb the nearby suburb. Okay, they are thorny scandin shrubs. And uh, tendrilar woody lions are also seen in this family. Uh, woody lions, what do you mean by woody lions? Uh, they have very stout stem. Okay, the stem is not weak, even though uh, with the help of the support they climb. Okay, they are mostly seen in uh, evergreen forests and to get maximum exposure to the sunlight, they take the support of the nearby structures or plants or trees and uh, they climb uh, to expose their canopy. Okay, so these are tendrilar woody lions and the example is Entera reedy. Okay, so we can see trees, herbs, shrubs, thorny scandish shrubs and the tendrilar woody lions in this subfamily. These are the examples. And when coming to the vegetative characters, first uh, we have to discuss the uh, root system followed by stem followed by leaves. Okay, we will see one by one. A uh, root system, as these plants belong to the dicotyledons, they have a tap root system, and uh, these uh, roots are well branched and extend deep into the soil. Next, uh, stem. Uh, stem is uh, usually it is a uh, aerial, erect, woody, and branched, but uh, in herbs, uh, the stem is very weak in nature. Okay, it is herbaceous, green in color, and very weak in herbs. And uh, woody climber is seen in Entera reedy. Just now we have seen the image of that one. It is a climber and it has angular stem. You can see in the picture, it has angular stem and it is a woody climber. It is a lion, it has a stout, a strong stem. But even though it uh, it is a climber, okay. Then uh, Mimosa rubicollis is a straggler. That means it has irregular growth. The growth is not even or regular. In the, the stem uh, shows irregular growth. Okay, so we call them as stragglers. Okay, Mimosa rubicollis is an example for stragglers. And um, most of the plants uh, belonging to this Mimosoidae they yield gums. Okay. This is regarding the stem. When coming to the leaves, uh, leaves are alternate. They have the petiole. What are alternate leaves? From each node only one leaf develops. Okay, so uh, leaves are alternate. They have the petiole. They are bipinnately compound. You can see here this is the primary rachis 
this primary rachis is again divided into secondary rachis and the leaflets are seen on the secondary rachis. Such type of uh, leaves are called as bipinnately compound leaves. And uh, uh, these bipinnately compound leaves are they are peripinnate. Peripinnate means they end up evenly, even number of leaflets are present. Okay, in each uh, leaf, you can see that uh, the leaflets, they end up in even number. Okay. So these are bipinnately compound and paripinnate. Example, uh, Cisalpinia and uh, Peltoforum are the good examples for this type of leaves. And uh, the leaf base is a pulvinous leaf base. You can see here the leaf base is pulvinous. And uh, unipinnate leaf compound leaves are seen in uh, Ingerdals. Ingerdals is also known as Pithacellobium dals. Okay, so here in uh, uh, Ingerdals, we, we see unipinnately compound leaves. And in Cisalpinia and uh, Peltoforum, you see bipinnately compound leaves. These leaves have a pulvinous leaf base and they show a reticulate venation. Okay, so uh, we have to bear in mind that all the dicotyledons, they have reticulate venation and taproot system branching. Okay, and they are tetramerous or pentamerous in nature. In Entedah, uh, the tip of the petiole, this is the petiole, see, the tip of the petiole is modified into a tendril. Just now we saw that it is a climber, it is a woody lion, it climbs uh, using the support. And in acacia, you can see these are the stipules. Stipules are modified into spines in acacia. See, you can see here these sharp structures which are arising from the base of the uh, leaf. These are stipules, actually, but they are modified into spines. And myrmecophilus uh, spines are seen in Acacia spherocephala. See, these are myrmecophilus uh, spines. What are myrmecophilus spines? These spines are very large and they are hollow and they give shelter to the ants. See, they are large, they are hollow, and they give shelter to the ants. Such type of uh, Spines are called myrmecophilus spines and they are seen in Acacia spherocephala. Okay, and uh, uh, in Acacia auriculiformis, uh, the petiole of the leaf is modified into a fill lord. See, this is the fill lord. Uh, what is the fill lord? It's a winged stalk uh, which functions as a leaf. This is green in color and it performs the functions of the leaf. This is part of the leaf, the basal region of the leaf that is petiole it the petiole uh, it forms a um, leaf like structure green in color and it performs the functions of the leaf that is photosynthesis okay so this structure is known as fill lord and it is seen in acacia auriculiformis apodica and neptunia the leaves are sensitive to touch and uh, we call such type of leaves as thick monastic leaves no. Inflorescence, it is a cymose head or capitate in uh, mimosa, albizia, and acacia. You can see such type of inflorescence. A uh, large number of sessile flowers, uh, they grow from a suppressed rachis, giving rise to a globose structure. You can see here, it is a globose structure. Hmm? Sessile flowers grow from the suppressed rachis, giving rise to such type of structure. So the, here, in uh, Mimosa, Albizia, and Acacia, you can see the cymos head. And in Prosophis and uh, Dichrostachis, you see spike as the inflorescence. See, this is the spike. And what is a spike? Spike is also a racine. racine and uh, in which uh, the flowers develop uh, directly from the stem and are not born on pedicels. See, they don't have pedicels. The flowers directly born on the stem okay so such type of uh, inflorescence racimos inflorescence is known as a spike so spike is seen in prosophis and dichrostachis okay? and a simple racim is seen in adenanthera what is a simple racim uh, uh, the features of uh, racimos inflorescence it shows uh, in the, the peduncle of the inflorescence shows indefinite growth and all the flowers are arranged in acropetal succession okay so uh, in Adnanthera, we will see the simple resin. Now, we will see the flowers in detail. Okay, uh, <clears throat> First, we will describe 
how the flower looks in this family okay the flower is a bracteate that means it has bracts bracts are the two green colored structures which are present at the base of the <coughs> peduncle or pedicel so in inflorescence we have number of flowers and the stalk of the inflorescence is known as peduncle and the stalk of individual flowers is known as uh, pedicel so if the green scale leaf like structures which are present at the base of the peduncle that is the stalk of the inflorescence then we call it as bracts and such type of inflorescence is known as bracteate one and if these leaf like structures scale leaf like structures which are present on the pedicels of individual flowers then we call it as bracteoles and such type of flowers are called bracteolate so these flowers are bracteate bracteolate pedicellate and uh, these are complete bisexual actinomorphic diclymedius heteroclymedius pentamerous and perigynous now what are complete flowers the flowers which have all the four holes that is calyx corolla androecium and gynoecium uh, we call such flowers as complete flowers all the four holes are present in such flowers and uh, when the flowers are complete they are definitely bisexual that means they have both the uh, male and female sex organs that is androecium and gynoecium and these flowers are actinomorphic actinomorphic it denotes the symmetry they are radially symmetrical we can cut the flower into two equal halves in any plane such type of flowers are called actinomorphic flowers see here we can cut it into two equal halves from this plane or this plane or this plane or in any plane we can make the flower into two equal halves then such type of symmetry is known as uh, radial symmetry and uh, the flowers are called actinomorphic flowers and these are diclymedias diclymedias means the perianth is seen in two holes that is the outer one is calyx and the inner one corolla okay heteroclymedias we can easily differentiate between calyx and corolla calyx is green in color and corolla is uh, differently colored and these flowers are pentamerous uh, pentamerous means uh, either the floral parts are five or multiples of five and in mimosa and acacia uh, the the mirosity is tetramerous that means they have a four or multiples of four the all the floral parts that is the petals sepals uh, and uh, uh, androecium uh, that is the stamens they are four in number or the multiples of four such type of flowers are called tetramerous flowers and these flowers are uh, hypogynous or perigynous in nature perigynous means all the other floral parts develop from uh, beside the ovary see you can see here all the other part that is calyx corolla and androecium they are developing from beside the ovary in such case the ovary is half superior or half inferior the position of the ovary is half superior or half inferior and hypogynous flowers are also seen here hypogynous means the position of the ovary is superior and all other parts they develop from below the ovary okay such type of uh, uh, arrangement is seen in this uh, family okay that is either the flowers may be perigynous or they are hypogynous in nature now when coming to the outermost hole calyx the sepals are four or five in number and they are green in color gamosepalous you can see here all the sepals are fused and they show volvate estivation what is volvate estivation the edges of these uh, sepals they just touch each other they do not overlap they come very close to each other they just touch each other okay so this is volvate estivation seen in this family and the odd sepal is anterior odd sepal anterior okay but uh, in uh, parkia you can see imbricate estivation what is imbricate estivation uh, one sepal is completely inside and the sepal opposite to it is completely outside and the three sepals they have one edge inside and one edge outside okay such type of uh, uh, estivation is known as imbricate estivation and it is seen in parkia coming to corolla petals are five in number but in acacia and mimosa they are four in number just now we discussed that they are 
tetrameres, acacia and mimosa are tetrameres, whereas all other members are pentameres in nature. So in acacia and mimosa, the petals are four in number. And uh, <clears throat> usually the petals are free. That's why we place it in polypetale, okay? So petals are free and uh, occasionally they are few. If they are fused, they are fused at their base. You can see here in this picture, this is calyx, which is completely fused, but here these are petals, corolla, they are fused at their base, but they are free at their tips, okay? So, and they also uh, show volvate estivation, volvate estivation. Okay. This is corolla. <clears throat> and coming to the androsium, the essential part, the male reproductive organ, stamins are numerous in number, stamins are um, uh, these uh, anthers are very minute and dithecus and they are extrodes. Extrodes means what? Extrodes means uh, the stamens are away from the center and they dehis towards outside. Okay, so the stamens are numerous in number, anthers are minute and, and uh, these uh, stamens are dithecus and they are extrodes. And pollen grains are polyards, pollen grains, polyards. Okay, then in prosophis, entera and adenanthera, stamens are 10 in number. And uh, in adenanthera, they are arranged in two holes. You can see here in this picture, uh, inner hole and an outer hole. And in albizia and uh, inga, we have monodal first stamens. What are monodal first stamens? The filaments of the stamens are fused, only at their uh, tips remain free, okay? Uh, coming to the gynosium, the innermost part and the female reproductive organ. Uh, the gynosium is monocarpellary. That means it has only one carpel. What is a carpel? A carpel is a female reproductive unit. It has style, stigma, and ovary. All these three structures form a single female reproductive unit called a carpel. So it has only one carpel. We call it as monocarpellary. And uh, the ovary shows only one locule, so unilocular. Ovary is a superior or it may be half inferior. See, you can see here in epigynous class, the position of the ovary is superior and all other parts develop from below the ovary. In such cases, the ovary is superior. And this type of uh, flowers are called epigynous flowers. And these are, uh, these flowers are called perigynous flowers. And you can see the uh, position of the ovary. All the other floral parts, they are developing from beside the ovary. The position of the ovary is half superior and half inferior. Either you may call it as a half inferior or half superior. So this type of uh, flowers, both that is the epigynous flowers and uh, this uh, perigynous flowers are seen in this subfamily. And the placentation is marginal placentation. See, all the ovules are arranged at the margins, okay? So inside the ovary, the ovules are present in a marginal placentation. Pollination, it takes place by insects, that is entomophily. And the fruits are uh, legumes in albizia and lumentum in acacia, okay? So uh, floral formula. You can see here, the flowers are bracteate, actinomorphic, they are bisexual, calyx, either four or five in number and gamocephalus in nature, corolla, four or five in number but polypetalous, androsium, ten are many in number, the stamens are ten are many in number and uh, in adnanthera we see five plus five condition, that is the Stamins are arranged in two holes, and the gynosium is monocarpellary. Uh, either it may be epigynous or perigynous in nature. So this is the floral formula, and the depiction of this floral formula pictorially is known as floral diagram. And you can see here, this is tetrameres flower and this pentameres flower. In mimosa, we will see tetrameres flower. So we have only uh, four sepals, and these are sepals, uh, petals. Stamins are four in number and monocarpillary. You can see here, <coughs> the sepals are five in number and they show volvate estivation followed by 
petals. Petals are also five in number, and the stamens are numerous in number, infinity. And this one, the uh, ovary, that is the gynoecium, is monocarpal with single ovary. Economic importance of mimozoidea, Wachelia leucophilia, and uh, Albizia lebec have medicinal values. Uh, the bark of Wachelia leucophilia is used in dental diseases and that of Albizia lebic is used in skin diseases and uh, some of the plants the uh, timber of these plants have a uh, good quality so uh, quality timber is obtained from Albizia lebic and uh, Xylia xylocarpa you can see here the pictures the images of this uh, Albizia lebec the timber of Albizia lebec okay it has a good quality timber and uh, some of the plants are used as even new plants this Albizia lebec and uh, Samenia summon you can see here in these pictures this is Albizia lebec and this is Samenia summon uh, they are used as uh, even new plants and they are good shade giving trees okay and, and uh, regarding uh, plants uh, which are used as food uh, Inga dulls or Pithacellobium dulls, uh, Aril is used uh, as uh, edible part of the fruit. You can see here, this is the white structure. This is Aril inside which you can see the black colored seed. Okay, so uh, the Aril of this Inga dulls is edible. This is regarding the economic importance of this family. Thank you for watching.